I think there was a lot going on under the surface between my mom and dad that I didn't necessarily pick up on. And so when they announced that they were getting divorced when I was 10, I went through a lot of turmoil in that first year, as most kids do when they find out that the two people they love the most in life don't love each other. My dad, um, you know, moved on to other women. Uh, my mom fell in love with one woman and she and her partner have been together for almost 30 years since then and been very, very consistent in my life. And while I was living with my mom and um, at her house, it was with her and her partner, who I love. Both of these women are incredible women. Both of them have my heart. And um, both of them are regular, permanent, loving fixtures of my life now. They have come to my wedding. They have been a welcome part of me bringing my children into this world. You know, my mom traveled with us when we went to adopt our son in China. And so they're just a part of the fabric of my life. So if all kids need are stable, loving adults, then my mom and her partner would have been enough for me because they had commitment, they had stability, they had love and affection for each other and for me, but that was not enough. I craved my father's attention. I craved his involvement because I was made for it. Every child is made to have their father love, adore, and connect with them. Every child is made to have the nurture and attention of their mother. They give kids two different things. And I certainly experienced that in my life. That while I was at my mom's house, I remember there would be times where I would just want to be with my dad. It's not like you just want to be with any adult. You want your father. Moms and dads give unique and complimentary gifts to their children. Children want and desire both. And when they have both, they thrive. A lot of people will say to me, you know, what does your mom think about where you stand on this? And I'll say, my mom and I are great because she knows that two men could never replace her. My husband's a pastor, and in his role, in this place, in a culture that is a little farther ahead than the rest of the country, I think, in terms of, of pulling away from biblical truth, we are confronted with this question regularly of what do we do? What do we do now that culture does not reflect, no longer reflects the biblical values of truth that, that we see uh, within scripture? What do we do? And the answer is, you become what you should have been all along. You become someone who is so familiar with the truth and able to stand on the truth regardless of what everyone else is doing around you. And you become the hands and feet of Jesus to everybody that you meet, especially those that disagree with you. And you learn to live in the tension and you learn to live in the discomfort because actually that's what Christianity is. It is dying to yourself and dying to what you want and need and long for so that you can live the gospel for those in your life and those around you. And that if you are coming from the place of wanting this life to be easy, then you actually have the wrong gospel because that is never how it was supposed to be. So yes, things are going to be hard. But the truth is, it's going to work some good in you and in me because as a result, we are going to be the salt and the light that we should have been to begin with.